Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at two different blue-red historic equipment decks and one of them is even historic themed, so hopefully that's not going to get too confusing. But uh, we'll be exploring both decks in today's video. So of course the main reason we're exploring this archetype is because of a Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders from Theros, a 3-mana 2-4 legendary creature that can tap to add 2 colorless mana to our mana pool that we can only spend on artifact spells or activated abilities of artifacts. And then equipped creatures we control have Flying and Haste. So two pretty nice keywords to have on an equipped creature. So this version is the historic version, since every card in the deck outside of Artificer's Assistant is historic, which means that a card like Jura, Weatherlight Captain, is quite excellent in the deck for mana for a 3-3 legendary creature that says whenever we cast a historic spell, a draw card, and of course by historic we mean artifacts, legendaries and sagas. No sagas in this deck, but plenty of legendary creatures and artifacts. So Jura makes for a very powerful card draw engine in this deck. And then the only non-historic card in the deck, Artificer's Assistant, still has great synergy with historic spells, as we get a 1-mana one 1-1 one one blue flyer that says whenever we cast a historic spell, scry 1. So if we can combine Assistant with Jora, we can get a ton of card selection and card draw to help us draw the cards we need. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Since we have so many legendary creatures, we're also playing the full playset of Mox Amber, which can allow us to accelerate out our more powerful spells, and of course also great in combination with the Artificer's Assistant and especially Jora. Then at 1 mana we've got our Assistant, then we've got 4 copies of Ginger Brute as a 1 mana 1-1 one, one artifact creature with haste, and potentially can be blocked this turn except by creatures with haste, so a good recipient for our various equipment. We've got 3 copies of Shadow Spear as a nice legendary equipment from Theros, giving the equipped creature plus 1 plus 1, Trample and Lifelink, so it gives us a way to potentially race aggressive decks, and the activated ability also removes Hexproof and Indestructible from the opponent's permanence, which can be relevant if you're facing some random Hexproof deck or maybe a Heliot from the life gain deck. And then we also have two copies of Short Sword to round out our one mana card, so another cheap equipment. So very nice to play with a Jora in play or a Sign Master Thopterus to generate that uh, Thopter token. And then of course can equip it for one mana to give the equipped creature plus one plus one. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Fibblethub the Lost as a 2 mana 1-1 one, one legendary creature that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. So a nice little historic creature that goes very well with our next card, Black Blade Reforged, a 2 mana legendary artifact equipment that gives the equipped creature plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control. So that's a very powerful effect potentially. And then we only have to pay 3 mana to equip a legendary creature, whereas we have to pay 7 mana to equip a regular creature. So that's why we have so many legendary creatures in the deck. Then we also have 2 copies of Mindstone, a 2 mana artifact that can tap to add colorless. So we can potentially go turn 2 Mindstone, turn 3 play Jora, and then potentially play Mox Amber in the same turn, draw a card with Jora, play another 1 mana artifact. So that's kind of where this deck can uh, go off and draw a ton of cards. So we don't mind a bit of additional ramp. And Mindstone also plays quite well with our next card, Emery Lurker of the Loch, which when it enters the battlefield, puts the top four cards of our library into our graveyard and costs one generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control. So very often we can cast an Emery for just a single blue mana and then can tap and choose target artifact in our graveyard and we can cast that card this turn. So we can potentially gain a lot of card advantage. We've got a few artifacts like Mindstone that can easily end up in our graveyard. It's also great with Mox Amber, since if we have multiple copies of Mox Amber, let's say we have one in play and one in the graveyard, we have a Jora in play and an Emery, then each turn we can just tap Emery and get a Mox Amber back from the graveyard, draw a card with Jora and generate one more mana, since we can just float a mana on the Mox Amber before it goes to the graveyard. Then we also have two copies of Sai Master Thopterist, which makes a 1-1 Thopter whenever we cast an artifact spell, and there's plenty of those in the deck, and can also potentially sacrifice some artifacts to draw more cards. Then we've got our three copies of Dalakos, not playing the full playset because between all the card selection from Assistant and Jora, we can usually end up with one copy and we don't really want to draw multiples. And same with uh, Jora, since it is still legendary, so drawing multiples is not great, but having one is very powerful. And then topping off our curve, we have two copies of Embercleave as another legendary equipment, giving the equipped creature plus one plus one, double strike and trample, can play the cleave at instant speed, and it's cheaper for each attacking creature we control, so great with the Thopters from Psy as well. So the end game of the deck is to try and put a cleave and maybe a second equipment, like Black Blade for a ton of extra damage, or Shadow Spear to gain a ton of life, and that's usually enough to end the game. 
And then our mana base, we've got uh, only 21 lands because we also have the Mox Amber to generate more mana, and the curve is relatively low. So we've got 8 islands, 5 mountains, 4 steam vents, and 4 sulfur falls. So that's a version 1 of our Blue Red Historic Equipment deck. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Um, yeah, I guess I can get behind this. We're missing a cheap Historic card to enable the Mox Amber. But I can use it to scry with the assistant, maybe. Amber cleave, not exactly what I wanted. So I could mox amber now. I think I will. And then sulfur falls isn't bad, but it's not gonna give me a play for next turn. But it would let me Dalakos on three. Maybe that's not good enough. Good draws here would be Emery, Fibblethip. Alright, and there's Emery, perfect. And then bottom Fibblethip, since we're gonna end up milling four, so just wanna keep artifacts on top. And there's a Shadow Spear in the graveyard. And I'll keep the Assistant back in case the Paradise Root attacks. Beast Whisper, so maybe our opponent on an Elves deck. I could double block, but Emery's too valuable here. Alright, so now I probably want to play Jora or. I guess Dalakos plays Steam Vents tapped and next turn Jora into Shadow Spear thanks to the mana from Dalakos is even better. Both are reasonable. And then don't need more cleaves. Because yeah, I could get back the Shadow Spear now. But I kind of want to draw with Jora. Maybe that's too greedy. But also saves me two life, which is not irrelevant. And now the assistant can attack. Imperious perfect, so definitely elf tribal. And another pelt collector. Right, Sir Point's also drawing a lot of cards here thanks to the Beast Whisper. But no amazing attack. I guess they can get in for three. Alright, so time to play Jora. And then we just want to scry into cheap artifacts. Get back Shadow Spear. And then probably play Shadow Spear, tapping my land. And then I can still equip with Dalakos. But I guess maybe I want Dalakos on defense and I won't end up equipping. Not sure here. We'll, we'll try it like this. Scry one draw cards. Mindstone seems pretty nifty. Although the one mana doesn't help me equip the Shadow Spear. And maybe that's a priority. I guess I'll still keep it on top and then this turn just equip Spear instead. I can equip Jora, so we have a 4-4 on defense. Not gonna attack, but I guess maybe Assistant can. I don't know, maybe if they play another Lord I just need to chump with the Assistant. We do have a backup Jora, so if that dies, it's not the end of the world. Can definitely entertain the idea of an attack next turn with Embercleave. And there's the other Lord. So I don't think we're dead on board, but it's definitely close. So 
So I can double block Beast Whisperer here, take four. Seems fine. Gain four as well. Ginger Brute to draw. So what's our play? We're definitely under a lot of pressure. No artifacts in the graveyards. Could play Jora. Play Mindstone, play Brute, draw a ton of cards. But I don't know if that's the approach we should take. If I equip a Shadow Spear for two mana. Could possibly cleave as well, but it's not gonna hit very hard. So I think I like the Jora line. And another Mox Amber is actually pretty nice. So I could play Brutes. Draw Mox Amber. And then we can also use Emery to get a Mox Amber back from the graveyard once again. Draw some more cards. Brutes, I guess it's just a chum blocker, so that's fine. So we'll make a mana, use Emery, get back Mox Amber, play Mox Amber. Don't need more Dalakos. And Black Blades is kind of how we will eventually win the game. For now, play Mindstone. And I guess I'll keep a land now. And then I can play Black Blade or play Brutes. Still have Dalakos to tap for mana as well. I'll play Brutes. Just one more bodies in play. In case we need to chump. Fibble Thip seems fine too, although I can't play that one with Dalakos. Maybe should have tapped differently. Yeah, definitely should have tapped the Mindstone here. And then I guess I'll pass. Can potentially chump with the Ginger Brute and sacrifice it. Opponent can get another clan caller to pump up their team. Important to note that Pelt Collector doesn't trample since it doesn't yet have the required counters on it, despite being a 4 4, which is also pretty important. So this Marwin saps for a lot of mana, so it can get another clan caller. Just the Pelt Collector is attacking. So I'll go for the Chump and Sack. And yeah, who knows, maybe next turn we can get in a nice attack with Black Blade and Ember Cleave on one creature. Didn't think we'd do anything else, so we'll untap. So how much mana do we have? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 from Emery, 10, 11 from Dalakos. Black Blades is 5 and gives plus 6, plus 6. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we can kill them here. No reach creatures. So yeah, let's go for it. Can equip Jura. And then I can just attack with everyone 
No life gain. And then we can cleave for two. Although we could do some other things here too. Could play some more equipment out. But it doesn't seem necessary. Bam, 20 damage with one attack. Alright, sweet, managed to beat Elf Tribal, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, not an exciting hand, get to go Brute into Fibblethip, no rat for Dalakos, pretty far from Cleave. So, might be able to do better on the Mulligan. Yeah, this seems better. So, definitely like the Mind Stone to go with Jora. Dalakos seems fine. Keeping both Dalakos and Black Blade is a pretty good combination. So I could see Bottling Fibblethup, although if we don't find a third land, it is a way to potentially draw one. Eh, I think I'll bottom Fibblethup still. And then turn to Mindstone. At the very least, we'll get to play a Dalakos. Drawing the second Black Blade, not great. Opponent on the red-green, and a Marauding Raptor, so looks like a dinosaur deck. Well, I think we'll just play Jora now then, and then... I mean, I could also go Dalakos, and then next turn go Jora into Black Blade. And uh, for toughness is maybe a bit more difficult for the opponent to kill. Yeah, sure. Because we really need Jora to survive and draw some extra cards here. If my opponent had, let's say, the uh, Savage Stomp, they could stomp Jora, whereas they can't quite kill Dalakos. Alright, it's gonna be a Living Twister. So, time for Jora. Into Blank Blade. And we can even play Shadow Spear here. Ooh, nice, Mox Amber. Don't mind if I do. And then no mana to really do anything. So we'll pass. And next turn we can maybe equip a Black Blade onto a Jora. It will gain flying. Maybe Shadow Spear as well for some lifelink and trample. Alright, it's gonna be a Banefire to take her out. It's too bad. Well, we can still do the same with Dalakos. And drawing too many lands, I guess, is still okay with the uh, Black Blade. Can also sank the Mind Stone here. Shadow Spear, so they are legendary, so that's the drawback of drawing multiples. But we still have a pretty big threat here. Eight power. Flying, lifelink, and trample. Next turn a land will make it nine, so not quite lethal. But if we draw another creature that we can maybe give haste by equipping it, we could close out the game. Experimental Frenzy, okay. Tank for four. And a Jora off the top, not bad, so play Jora. Can move the Shadow Spear. Could even play Shadow Spear from hand just to draw cards. And that's just enough for lethal. 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty uninspiring. This is a bit better. And I'm gonna have to draw a mountain here, so I think I'm okay bottoming an island. Turn to Diligent Excavator, all right. Can play turn to Emery. Could play the short sword first, but maybe I want to save it to make a Thopter with Psy. Mox Amber in the graveyard, that's perfect. Although I still don't have red mana for uh, Dalakos and Jora. Mindstone. And is our opponent self milling? They are. And a second excavator. Alright, so our opponent some sort of self mill combo deck. Another Mox Amber. So I can play this one, play a Psy, get a Mox Amber from the graveyard, play that, and then play a Sword. Make a couple Thopters. And then we're just waiting for that red mana. And then double Mox Amber plus a Jora is pretty sweet. Another Mindstone. All right, I see. So it's an Underworld Breach combo deck. Makes a lot of sense. See Mox Amber there as well, some historic creatures. So the Mox Amber is the thing that kind of generates the mana to make sure the Underworld Breach stays fueled. So they might be able to combo off next turn if they have a Breach in hand. And they probably have like a Thassa's Oracle as their win condition. In the meantime, we're waiting for red mana to really get going here. Another Emery, not quite. I mean, I can play it just to mill myself for some more, but it doesn't accomplish a whole lot. Could maybe sacrifice some artifacts to Psy to draw cards. And there's the Underworld Breach. So pretty sure we're dead, but we'll let the opponent combo off here. Each Mox Amber they play, they get to mill themselves for uh, four cards. Which means they get to basically pay for the Underworld Breach, exile three cards. So they net one extra card per Historic spell. They have two Mox Amber, so they can alternate those. and eventually finds a Thassa's Oracle to win the game. So, yeah, we already see the Thassa's Oracle in the opponent's graveyard. So, I think we're just 100% dead. But uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to take a look at their deck, maybe get some ideas for our own historic breach deck. And it shouldn't take too long for them to combo, they just need to play some Mox Ambers. And uh, eventually the Thassa's Oracle were tapped out, so... We'll maybe speed up this part in uh, post-production, so you don't have to sit through it.
And there we see the Thassa's Oracle. Five cards and plenty of blue devotion, so that wins the game. Alright, on to the next one. Now it's time to take a look at our second build, which is centered around our champions. We've got the full playset of Champion of the Flame 2 mana for a 1-1 trampling creature that gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura and equipment attached to it. So no auras in this deck, but plenty of equipment to enhance our Champion of the Flame. And then we also have the full playset of Fervent Champion, 1 mana for a 1-1 haste creature with first strike that whenever it attacks gives another target attacking knight we control plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, no other knights in this deck besides Fervent Champion, but still great when we draw multiples, but then the last ability is what makes it so synergistic in this deck, equip abilities we activate that target Fervent Champion cost 3 generic mana less to activate, so very often we can equip the Fervent Champion for free in this deck, which saves us a lot of mana. So to complement our 8 champions we want plenty of cheap equipment in this deck, because Champion of the Flame scales much better if we have plenty of cheap equipment, as opposed to one very large equipment. And to make that happen we're also playing the full playset of Renowned Weaponsmith as a 2 mana 1-3, has a very similar ability to Dalakos as it can tap to add to Colorless that we can spend on artifacts, but we can also spend 1 blue mana and tap the Weaponsmith to search our library for a card named Heartpiercer Bow or Vial of Dragonfire. No copies of Vial of Dragonfire in the deck, but we do have the full playset of Heartpiercer Bow, which is a 2 mana equipment, costs only 1 mana to equip, and whenever the equipped creature attacks, the bow deals 1 damage to target creature defending player controls. So we can very easily end up with 4 copies of Heartpiercer Bow in play, and of course if we put them all on a Champion of the Flame it will get plus 8 plus 8, which is not too shabby, and we can equip the Heartpiercer Bow for free onto our Fervent Champion, so even if we're with an empty board with 4 Heartpiercer Bows, we can top deck a Fervent Champion, put 4 Bows on it and potentially take out a 4 Toughness creature from the opponent turn after turn, which is a pretty strong late game plan. And then we have even more cheap equipment, the full playset of Shadow Spear, which we also saw in the previous build, and the full playset of Short Sword, which is also much better in this deck as opposed to the other one. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, some cards we haven't covered yet. The full playset of Ginger Brute here as well, as another 1 mana 1 1 haster. Also, the ability here quite relevant. If there's some sort of board stall, we can potentially load a bunch of equipment onto Ginger Brute to close out the game. Also, very good with Hard Piercer Bow. And then at 2 mana we've covered all our cards already, at 3 we've got the full playset of Dalakos as opposed to just 3 copies, since we don't have as much card selection as in the historic build, so we want to just maximize our chances of finding Dalakos, which of course is also very good with all these cheap equipment. We can even potentially equip Dalakos for 1 mana using a short sword, if we just play Dalakos and then tap Dalakos for 2 mana as a way to potentially generate 1 mana, so that's also an interesting interaction that can come up. And of course the haste is also quite relevant if we're going to play a giant champion of the flame that can potentially close out the game out of nowhere. The haste is also the reason why we're playing two copies of Cranko in Street Kingpin, which often suffers from getting removed right away. But if we can play a Cranko, equip it for cheap and attack with it to make some goblins right away, that can definitely make the difference. And we still have two copies of Psy Master Thopterus to go with all our cheap artifacts, and three copies of Ember Cleave to round out the deck, also great with all the tokens we can generate from Psy and Krenko to play it on the cheap, and a great finisher in combination with a Champion of the Flame. And then our mana base is a little bit different, since we have more of a focus on red in the early game as opposed to blue, so a few more mountains, and then one copy of Castle Ambreth, which can also potentially go well with our Psy or Krenko to close out the game. And yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn 2 Weaponsmith, turn 3 Krenko. Can equip Krenko with a Shadow Spear right away. And if Kranko gets answered, we've got a backup. Up against the blue-green, turn to Fibblethip. Yeah, still gonna play the Kranko here. Second Fibblethip, okay. So it looks like we'll be able to make some goblins. Ooh, 
Ooh, Dolico is a draw as well. That can do some things. So I could play Dalakos, equip it with short swords. I guess it doesn't accomplish a whole lot, but it's kind of cool. Sure. Play short swords, equip short swords. And then the stamps are two mana. Move on to Krenko. And then I have one extra mana that I'm not going to use, but I just wanted to prove a point. Opponent's at 16. Hopefully no 4 mana sweeper. It's going to be a banishing light on Krenko, that's fine. We've got a backup and Dalakos can give it haste right away. This is the type of draw where a uh, Castle Emberth would be quite good too. So, alright, sadly our opponent's gonna pack it in already, but yeah, we could play Krenko, we've got 4 mana for artifacts, so we could equip Shadow Spear, equip Short Sword, attack with everyone, hope they don't have some sort of sweeper next turn, and then probably kill them the turn after. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, a reasonable hand, I guess, double Shadow Spear, a little awkward, but seems keepable enough. Turn to Weaponsmith would be quite good here. That or a Champion of the Flame. Opponent on Stitcher Supplier, so a graveyard strategy. We see Uro, Cauldron Familiar. Hardpiercer Bow, not a bad pickup. Although I think I prefer playing the Dalakos here. And next turn we can maybe pick off some one toughness creatures. Which is often to go with the Cauldron Familiar. But we can give our creatures flying and trample pretty easily, so it's not going to be chumping all that much. Short sword as well. My opponent probably wants the Stitcher Supplier to die and put more stuff in the graveyard. We also see the uh, Troll King, so if they get three food tokens, they can bring this back from the graveyard. So we're in a bit of trouble. The bow, while it does kill their creatures, not great against the oven. So I guess I don't need to play the bow. And instead we'll just play short sword. Equip Sword to the Brutes and Shadow Spear to Dalakos and just attack in the air. Creeping Chill, milled over, hits us for three. Second Witch's Oven, pretty good with the two familiars. So we could already see the Feasting Troll King make an appearance here. And another Heart Piercer Bow, not exactly what we need. So I guess I'll move the Short Sword to Dalakos. So it gains a bit more life, and then I can equip the bow to the Ginger Brutes. Cards we want to draw here, Amber Cleave would be good, Champion of the Flame we can play, give haste and equip with a bunch of different equipment to potentially close out the game in one attack. They're just going to bring back Cauldron Familiars. Ooh. 
They could almost get back Uro if they have an untapped green source. And Fabled Passage will make that happen. So that's gonna gain them some more life. So yeah, if we don't draw something good off the top, we're definitely gonna start falling behind. And looks like we're going to see a Troll King this turn as well. At least a Troll King doesn't make food when he's returned from the graveyard. Weaponsmith. So I can play Weaponsmith. Equip it so I can activate it right away. So that generates one more mana. Or I can search up another Heart Piercer bow, but even four bows don't really make a difference here. So I guess we'll just play it. And uh, I guess I can equip so it gains flying and then activate the Ginger Brute to get in for one damage. Their opponent's at 10, but they're gonna gain 3 per turn. And that's before we factor in the familiars here. Third Witch's Oven. And a Glow Spore Shaman. That one we can take out pretty easily. Another Creeping Chill revealed. So we're down to six. Yeah, we are almost just dead here to these familiars. King comes back and just a land a draw. So yeah, our draw didn't really come together this game. Is there any way we can stay alive? Probably not. Alright, GG's on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and don't think I can keep this hand. No blue for the weaponsmith. This is better. This hand kind of has it all. I guess I bottom Psy here. And just rely on the champion with a bunch of bows. Definitely gonna prioritize playing the weapon smith first. Alright, so I'll need to be very careful with Firebrand in play because we don't want that to kill my champion, so hopefully the Firebrand will be tapped and then I can play champion and equip it. Could also maybe kill the Firebrand with Heartpiercer Bow. Instead, a Lightning Strike takes out Weaponsmith. Double champion. Yeah, I guess we'll play one. Two mana to equip with the Shadow Spear. Could have also just played Taplan and passed, and then next turn play champion equip right away. And against double firebrands, we could get punished, but they are likely to attack with the first one. Looks like a spectacle card. Secure the critics, goes face. <laughs> we keep drawing champions of the flame. Alright, I've got a 4-4. Trample lifelink, that's only gonna get bigger. Let's see if they can take it out with two burn spells. Uh, 
Doesn't look like it. And Heartpiercer Bow is one of our better draws here. Play Bow, equip Champion. And start going to town. Alright, they did have a Wizard's Lightning and Firebrand to take out my Champion, sadly. But we've got one last Champion. Which we can play and equip next turn. And hopefully that one doesn't get burnt out. Sovereign's Bite. Down to seven. One card left. It's a land. Alright, I think we've got this. Dalako is also pretty potent. But I think I just want to make a giant champion. While we still can. And yeah, it's just a tap land, so this game seems pretty over. Take out the Pyromancer, gain six. And my opponent stop decking. All right, sweet. So yeah, we got to see both equipment decks in action. Let me know in the comments which one you like the most, the historic one or the champion one. But uh, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.